Hello, I'm Bex and welcome to our Precision Consulting series of tutorial videos. In this first video, we'll talk about a key characteristic of all well-designed research, which is alignment. You might be a beginning researcher conducting your earliest research projects for your master's or doctoral degrees, or a seasoned researcher conducting studies for publication. Either way, achieving alignment in your study is super important. It's an area that we find that our clients need lots of help with when doing their dissertations. So I'll be talking with you today about alignment to provide you with a clear and more concrete understanding of what alignment means. We'll also help you develop an understanding of how to achieve alignment in your study and why this is so important. Creating alignment is a key part of developing your topic. And if you're still looking to more fully develop your own topic, we can provide help with your dissertation focus and other elements for you. Check out our video on topic developments for more. Alignment is an essential characteristic of a well-designed study, and yet it can be quite difficult to achieve for novice researchers. In fact, we often provide dissertation help to clients who are struggling to align their studies. And we commonly find that alignment issues are truly the root problem that reviewers often mislabel as editing issues during the dissertation prospectus, concept paper, or proposal stage. So before you focus your efforts on APA editing needlessly, let's talk first about how to achieve alignment in your study, starting with what alignment means. When your study is appropriately aligned, this means that all the core pieces of your research plan follow logically from the problem that you have constructed from your review of the research literature. Following your problem statement, you must craft the subsequent pieces of your research plan so that they all match one another in terms of the language that you use to discuss variables or phenomena of interest and the plans you construct for collecting and analysing your data. Now, as I mentioned previously, we often find that masters and doctoral candidates as novice researchers need some dissertation help when different pieces of their studies don't quite fit together as well as they should. When we provide this form of dissertation consulting, here are the areas that we ensure are aligned. The key features of the study that must be aligned are the problem statement, the purpose statement, the research questions, the theoretical framework, the method and design, the data collection and analysis procedures, and the significance of the study. Now, you might visualize these different key pieces of your study as boxcars on a train that must all be linked together for your study to function successfully as a process for gaining new insights or understanding of your topic. If any of these cars are not linked to the car preceding it, then clearly your study will be a non-functional collection of segments that don't work well with one another. In other words, the train falls apart and never gets to its destination. Now, we don't want that, do we? So to clarify how these different segments of your study fit together, let's move on to discuss each of these in more detail. The problem statement is essentially the centerpiece of your study or the engine that drives the train forward. Now, although this statement is usually fairly brief, at about 350 words or so, the information contained within the statement defines the direction the entire study will follow. So your problem statement must define the exact nature of the problem as derived through a review of all the current research in the peer-reviewed literature of your topic. The problem statement must also describe the research gap. This is a specific topic that has not been studied sufficiently and requires further examination through research. As an example, your problem statement might revolve around high school students who engage in aggressive behaviours at school. They might do this in spite of presence of a school-wide positive behaviour support programme. Maybe there have been several quantitative studies that document the overall positive effects of this type of school-wide programme on student challenging behaviour. But the researchers who conducted these studies found that in spite of widespread improvements in behaviour in response to such programmes, many students continue to exhibit aggressive behaviour. This leads us to ask, why is this? Why is it that certain kids keep fighting and yelling at school, even under behaviour support programmes that have been so helpful to so many other students? 
the lack of understanding of continued aggressive behaviour by some students within schools that use school-wide positive behaviour supports would be the gap that these researchers must argue must be better understood, effectively address aggressive behaviour across all students. Following on from this problem and research gap is the purpose of this study, or the purpose statement. The purpose is a very concise statement that basically says, this is what I'm trying to do here in this study, and here's how I'm going to do it. Now, in order to achieve alignment, the purpose must match what has been stated in the problem statement. This is accomplished through the use of the same language to describe your variables or phenomena of interest. The purpose statement must also specify the method and design and must use language that fits this approach. Using the example of the problem and research gap from before, an appropriate purpose statement might be, the purpose of this qualitative case study is to explore middle school teachers' perspectives on underlying causes of continued aggressive behaviour in students within schools that use school-wide positive behaviour supports. Now let's have a look at the key pieces of this purpose statement. So in this we have a qualitative case study, the word explore, middle school teachers, continued aggressive behaviour in students, and schools that use school-wide positive behaviour supports. So those are all key pieces of the purpose statement. Now what you'll notice here is that the purpose statement specifies an intent to examine the very same problem that is described in the problem statement. Now this is essential for achieving alignment. Also, the qualitative method is aligned with the problem because we are seeking to understand a phenomenon that is somewhat rare and that might require perspectives of those who have witnessed this problem firsthand to understand fully. Now, note that also this use of the word explore in the purpose statement, now this is a deliberate choice of words as qualitative studies are largely exploratory and aimed at using such exploration to better understand complex processes. The link from the problem to the purpose is essentially to establish an aligned study. We often find that doctoral candidates need some assistance with their dissertations here. The phrasing used in the purpose statement must be extremely concise and yet precisely aligned with each key concept, variable or phenomenon presented in the problem statement. This is something that many of our clients struggle with and if you're also finding yourself struggling to align your problem and purpose, then give us a call or send us an email to see how we can help you stand out with this major step in crafting your dissertation. Now, no matter where you attend, we can definitely help you out with alignment, but we have particularly extensive experience with all of the major online universities and are very familiar with their formats, review processes, and types of alignment problems that often arise for individuals at these universities. And if we can help you with establishing alignment in your dissertation, we'll provide unlimited revisions to our work with no extra charge as needed to obtain approval for your work. Next in the alignment chain are the research questions, which must align with your purpose in terms of the variables or phenomena of interest that you plan to study. You must also use phrasing in these questions that is consistent with the method and design for your study. In the working example I've been using, an appropriate research question might be the following. How do middle school teachers working in schools that implement school-wide positive behaviour supports perceive the causes for continued aggression in students in their schools? Note that this question maintains consistent focus on the perceptions of middle school teachers. Also, the question specifies that school-wide positive behaviour supports are in place. Finally, it continues with the focus on causes for continued aggression in some students. Next is the theoretical framework, which must be appropriate for guiding inquiry and developing research questions that suitably address your problem. It must also fit your study in terms of its applicability for interpreting or explaining the ultimate findings or results of the analysis. In the current example, it would be important to pick a theory that is relevant to students' behaviour and the causes for different types of behaviour. So picking a theory like observational learning theory or ecological systems theory could work. These are theories that explain human behaviour in terms of different types of social and environmental influences. Aligning the theoretical framework to the purpose statement and our cues 
can also be a bit tricky for new researchers. Choosing a useful theoretical framework requires seeing how the different variables of phenomena of interest in your study might interact with regard to your research questions or outcomes of interest. This can sometimes require piecing together existing knowledge of your topic and making a reasonable guess as to the theory or combination of theories that might ultimately be helpful in explaining your findings. Sometimes this process can be quite confusing especially when you're examining RQs that are unique or groundbreaking. Well, in this case, you might find that you need help reworking this part of your dissertation to identify the most fitting theory or combination of theories to frame your study and interpret its findings. Moving forward, the method and design must be appropriate for examining the specific problem articulated and for generating knowledge that will truly shed light on the problem as described. Now, as I mentioned previously, the qualitative method would be appropriately aligned to this study because of your aim of exploring a poorly understood phenomenon, which is the continued aggression in certain students in spite of school-wide positive behaviour supports. The case study design is also aligned with this focus because this design is great for building understanding of complex processes as they naturally occur in specific groups or settings. You can see how exploring teachers' perceptions of the causes of aggression within certain schools would turn out to be very complex in its study. This would be concerned with how the complexities of student behaviour unfold on a daily basis within schools that use positive behaviour supports. For these reasons, the qualitative case study design is nicely aligned with the overall study. Also, keep in mind that we are unique among data and analytics companies in that we also specialise in qualitative research and analysis. So if you are planning a qualitative study and are having problems with alignment, I'm 100% sure that we can help you resolve these problems. To maintain alignment, your data collection procedures must be developed to obtain data of a type that is appropriate, given the method and design. Similarly, the data analysis plan must be appropriate given the nature of the data, variables and research design. For a qualitative case study design, you would want to use data collection approaches like interviews, observations and reviews of relevant documents. You'd want to draw up an analysis plan that identified common themes and facilitated triangulation amongst your different data sources. If you put together a data collection plan that used quantitative measures, this would result in misalignment, as the data you collected would be numerical rather than text-based. Aligning your methods to your problem, purpose and research questions is essential for ensuring that the results or findings you ultimately obtain truly address the problem that you've identified. Creating an aligned method requires not just attention to consistent phrasing related to your variables or phenomena of interest, but also a thorough understanding of statistical analysis or qualitative analysis. We often provide dissertation help to clients to develop thorough method sections that are perfectly aligned with the overall aims of their studies. We have extensive experience with all of the major online universities and are very familiar with their formats, review processes and types of alignment problems that often arise for individuals at these universities. Also, we're the only academic consulting firm that specialises in qualitative research. If you're planning a qualitative study and are having problems with aligning the various components of your qualitative methodology, we can definitely help you out. Also, we provide unlimited revisions to our work with no extra charge as needed to obtain approval for your work. Finally, the significance refers to the potentially positive outcomes of your study. If all goes well, of course. <laughs> to maintain alignment, your significance of the study section must logically flow from the problem and cannot overreach the bounds of what is possible to accomplish given the potential findings of the study. Given our running example, an aligned significance section would point out that gaining understanding of teachers' perceptions of the causes for continued aggression in students within a school-wide positive behaviour support programme might be helpful in effectively addressing challenging behaviour in students whose behaviour is resistant to change. Ensuring that your proposed study is perfectly aligned is important for obtaining approval of your study. 
but the reasons for seeking out dissertation help around alignment issues in your proposed study are really much more important than this. If you move forward with collecting your data in a proposed study that is not well aligned, you can run into some serious problems down the road. So to help explain the vital importance of alignment in your study, it will be helpful to ask, why is it a problem if elements of my study are not aligned? If your study is out of alignment, this means that one or more of these key pieces aren't linked with the pieces around them. There are some pretty serious consequences of moving forward with an improperly aligned study. For one, it could result in collecting data that doesn't address your problem or cannot actually answer your research questions. Also, this could result in conducting data analysis that results in unreliable, invalid or untrustworthy findings. And lastly, a misaligned study could result in findings that can't be soundly interpreted within the explanatory theoretical framework for the study. These are clearly problems that no researcher wants to deal with, especially when you're just getting started. But this is definitely where a dissertation consultant can come in handy. And if you'd like some help with your dissertation proposal or prospectus to resolve alignment problems, then give us a call or send us an email. We'd love to help you out.